Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today's video is gonna be a little different, and that's because today I wanna take you on a journey. And that journey is the one that I took to transform a spare room here in my studio space and make it into a usable recording space. So I run an office space here in town and there's a couple different rooms and the room just beyond the camera behind the wall in front of my desk is a room. It's been a junk closet essentially for the last four or five years. I just toss boxes and stuff back there. But it's long been an ambition of mine to take the junk closet room and clean it out and outfit it so I can record any instrument comfortably, like drums, vocals, acoustic guitars, anything. Of course, when we're talking about outfitting a room, we're talking about acoustics, really, because the room that you're recording in, the room that you're mixing in, it impacts what you hear and what you capture significantly. But it's really hard to appreciate how much of an impact the room has on your recordings, on your mixes, without hearing before and after examples. So that's what I did. I recorded three instruments before and after I applied acoustic treatment. So I want to share this journey with you. I want to share the audio examples with you so you can, I don't know, hopefully glean some insights from my experience because I thought it was pretty enlightening. And I also have downloadable audio files in the description below that you can download yourself to check out. So let's dig into it. All right, so to reiterate, my goal for this separate space was to turn it into a usable recording space. Not the perfect recording space because just based on the dimensions and what's going on, probably not gonna be a possibility. I mean, it's eight feet wide by 21 feet-ish long and then from floor to ceiling, about nine feet. There's five different windows that are pretty big and two door frames. So there's a lot to contend with. But if I could achieve something usable where I could record, listen back and not be completely offended by what I heard, that's a win. From there, I had to choose what kind of acoustic treatment is going to be best for my circumstances and the space because there's a couple different ways I could have gone about this. Number one, I'm sure you're familiar with it, is the option of acoustic foam, which is essentially foam, like packing foam, tacked to the walls in various shapes and, you know, different designs. Now, foam sounds good in theory, right? It's lightweight, cheap. You could tack it to a wall without making a mess, probably take it down without making too much of a mess. But foam really just tamps down unlike the high end of a space. So you can get rid of a flutter echo probably, you know, that sound if you snap your fingers, clap your hands, and it's a tight ringing to the room. Probably deal with that. But what eventually happens is you tack up all this foam and you hear this dampening of the high end, but the most problematic area of a room, which is the low end in the low mids, is just running rampant. So your room sounds overly dead, but still hasn't been taken care of. So number one, definitely not for me. Number two is the option of either building or purchasing acoustic panels, which is essentially insulation, such as rock wool, Owens Corning, inside a wood frame with fabric covering the front of it. You can hang it up on the walls from the ceiling, stand it off the floor. Or number three, I could have just tore down the walls and built a purpose-built room for recording. But I rent this space, I don't own it, and I'm not really looking for a demo project for the next six or 12 months. So I have my space. I know what kind of treatment I want to apply. But after that, I honestly had no clue what the next step was because I don't know. Is treating a recording space like treating a mixing space? I have no idea. I've, I've never done it. And the resources online tend to skew towards mixing. And there's plenty of information for where to place speakers, where to place a listening position, where to place panels for the early reflections. But for tracking space, I don't know. How thick should the panels be? How many panels? Where should they be placed? How much is enough? How much is too much? So I'm just kind of over guessing at these details because I've done plenty of that in the years past. So I went with a company that I have worked with in the past and have purchased plenty of products from in the past. And that's GIK Acoustics. They're a US-based company. I believe they ship worldwide. And GIK offers free acoustic advice for free. You just fill out a form, you give personal details like name, address type of thing. And then you let them know the details of the space, like the dimensions. And if there are windows or door frames to watch out for and what the purpose of the space is gonna be. Is it for mixing, recording, something else? You also share your budget with them, which is really helpful. So they'll work within your budget and wait 24, 48 hours and you get a response back. So I waited, GIK hit me up. It was a designer by the name of John. And John, for this was my first time ever experiencing with GIK, John sent me an email, but instead of sending me a long email with tons of details, this has been my experience in the past, plenty of details of what kind of treatment, where to place it, why you need to place it. He sent me a smaller version of that email with a link. And that link took me to a 3D rendering of my space. 
and that blew my mind. It was a 3D rendering of the space with the windows, with the door frames, the exact dimensions, with GIK recommended products in place. This was amazing because I could see what kind of treatment was going to be necessary, what kind of thickness of panels are recommended, where they need to be placed, all these details. I could glean why certain things were the way they were. And John was trying to accommodate when he built this rendering, the fact that it's a tight space and people need to exist in the space. So I loved it. The next decision was, do I build the panels myself or do I purchase the panels? Because obviously there's a trade-off there. Building panels myself, maybe a little cheaper, but it's going to cost time. Purchasing the panels, it's going to save time, but probably cost a little more. And I got to be honest, I've done enough of building stuff on my own. There's panels in the corners here and behind me that I built. And anytime I wield a tool, it's not a pretty sight. I just devolve into expletives and frustration. And I just, I'm not that kind of person. So I went with GIK, which I'm sure you could have guessed. But to me, that was the best trade-off because they know what they're doing. I don't. So why not? So I placed the order and then all 20 some odd panels and hardware showed up in less than a week on my doorstep, which included four floor standing two inch thick panels that have metal feet that attach to them. And those are placed in front of the windows based on the recommendations. Then there were four base traps essentially with diffusers. These are called alpha traps and they hang on the walls. After that were two rounded, what are called polyfusers. These are what I'm told true base traps. They reflect everything like upper mid range and highs but absorb the low end. I'm just looking at my notes, four corner traps with diffusers. So these are placed in the corners and then six ceiling panels, which originally were recommended nine ceiling panels. So these are broadband thick base traps that hang from the ceiling. But the reason I got six was budget. Hanging wise, eight of the panels just stood on the floor. So that was really easy. Four of the floor standing panels and the corner traps just stack on one another. So that was covered. The alpha panels and polyfusers, GIK actually provides picture hanging wire. So a really thick wire, you could just hang it like a picture with a single screw or a nail in the wall. So that was pretty awesome. And then beyond that, the ceiling panels, I had to pick up some of the GIK manufactured brackets for ceiling hanging, but that was really awesome. They're really simple brackets that you can just screw to the frame of the acoustic treatment and slide it onto the screws that are plugged into the ceiling. And they provide all the hardware for that. So I just fast forward through like four weeks of planning and ordering, setting up the panels, recording before and after results. How does it sound? How does this particular room, its particular circumstances, quirks, dimensions, how does it sound recording drums, acoustic guitar, and vocals before treatment goes up and then after? So I have a project on screen that I want to dig into and show you these audio examples side by side. All right, so on screen, I have all the different recordings, the acoustic guitar recordings, vocal recordings, and drums before any acoustic treatment went up and after. Let's start with the acoustic guitar here. I'll play for you the before example of the acoustic guitar and then the after example, and then we'll listen to both back to back so you can really get a sense of what's going on here. Here we go. All right, so let's take a listen now to the after example. Here we go. That's pretty interesting, right? The after example sounds so much tighter, so much tighter as compared to the first example. You don't hear nearly as much of the room, whereas with the before example, you hear the room in the mix with the acoustic guitar. So let's now do a direct comparison back to back. So I'll solo each one. Take a listen. I find that to be pretty significant. So let's now take a listen to the vocals here, before and after. And we're gonna listen in isolation so you can get a sense of what's going on. Here we go. Yeah, you're here for what I have to say, like a hologram. 
You could appear for a minor fee, but your people handle that. All right, let's take a listen to the after. Yeah, you're here for what I have to say, like a hologram. You could appear for a minor fee, but your people handle that. Pretty interesting. If we listen to the louder section here. I want to shut it down, but that hook is coming round. Yeah, yeah. These are somber days. Yeah, yeah. You can really hear the room being excited on those louder moments. Let's hear the after example. I want to shut it down, but that hook is coming round. Yeah, yeah. These are somber days. Yeah, yeah. A huge difference. Let's hear the before and after back to back. I want to shut it down, but that hook is coming round. Yeah, yeah. These are somber days. Yeah, yeah. These are somber. All right, so let's now take a listen to the drums, the overheads kick and snare, and then we'll listen to the after example again. Here we go. All right, sounds pretty good. With the after example, I'll unmute all three of these in solo. Take a listen. That is a huge difference. Let's hear back to back. Now, this is a pretty interesting comparison because honestly, I don't hate the sound of the room in the first example. This actually caught me by surprise. I thought I would absolutely think it sounded like a garbage can. But let me now draw your attention to the overheads here and what this sounds like before and after. It's kind of laughable to call the first example an overhead track because the cymbals sound indistinct. There's so much of the sound of the room in the mix. Whereas in the after example of the overheads, it's going to be a lot easier because there's way less room bleeding into the overhead mic. So there you have it. The process, the journey of outfitting a spare room, which is by no means perfect. It could be like a spare room in your house, your garage, whatever. And then applying acoustic treatment and the before and after results. Now, I recognize that you might not be in the position or interested in outfitting an entire room to the degree of which I have panels now set up in this room. But I think it really demonstrates how much the room and the environment around you impacts the sound of the recordings. And even if it's just like a foldable standing panel, just so you can get great acoustic guitar recordings in your bedroom. GIK has plenty of products that can accommodate different budgets, different levels of needs. So. That's it. I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was pretty cool. And why not post it on YouTube for, for you and everyone else if you're in this mode of thinking of how to get the best out of your recordings for your circumstances. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to widelogicprorules.com, the website here on the channel. And be sure to check out the description below where I have downloadable audio files that you can check out and listen to on your own of this entire experience. I'll talk to you later. Take care.